Oh, the first descendant hot fix 1.1.1 1 .1 1 .1 manifest. <laughs> All right, details here. So content improvements. So invasion improved the mechanics of the Order of Truth dungeon. Removed the arcade pillars that didn't display any symbols. Improved arcade pillars so now they face toward the inside of the battle area. And they, this is a huge one. Simplified the design of the symbols displayed on the pillars and reduced the number from six to four. Now you're just going to call this one an X, triangle, a circle, and a square or box. <laughs> That's a huge one and I, I'm glad they did that. But up here regarding the, the pillars that didn't display any symbols and they face toward the inside of the battle area. I didn't per se care too much. I don't care too much about this. Now this just kind of removes the added challenge in my opinion. But changing the design was definitely a very huge one. Now I fixed an issue where skills would continue to target the tumors of the arcade pillars even after they were destroyed. Proof pillars so tumors do not regenerate after they are destroyed. That's huge. Reduce the number of hits needed to destroy arcade pillar tumors from five to three. So it should be to like what one hit if you have that buff on inside of your little artifact thing. Now adjusted the movement path of the ancestor drone, reduced the movement speed of the ancestor drone, change direction of the symbol displayed above the ancestor drone to be vertical. More little UI improvements inside of there. Reduce the number of hits needed to destroy the malignant tumor blocking the door from three to two, allowing it to be cleared in one attempt. Now this is huge, guys. They're just they're just taking all the putting all the safeties on these things now. But before you have to do it in two. Now, increase range and firing rate of the inversion energy emitter. Fix an issue where gates would receive damage if the descendant would hit a gate with a skill while having a module equipped that lowered the skill power modifier and also had inversion energy emitter equipped. Now this is a huge one. People getting super fast clear times basically exploiting this. Now they've increased the melee monster spawn rate. They even improved the mechanics of the Legion of Immortality dungeon. Move the time limit for artificial brain input after the first supply. Change the amount of artificial brains that have to be supplied to 20. Change the amount of artificial brains the player can hold from 15 to 10. Move the location of the phase separation veil generator in the computing unit in battles with named monsters. Invasion improved the mechanics of the Legion of Darkness dungeon, adjusted the arcade tile positions to make it easier to identify them, reduced the arcade tile occupation time to three seconds. This is huge. I'm going to say it was maybe around eight seconds prior. I'm surprised they didn't actually mention, you know, what it was before and then down to three. I think it was around eight before. I simplified the color and symbols displayed in the arcade tiles, reduced the number from six to four. Another huge one. Oh. <laughs> Remove the suicide bomber that would destroy the arcade tiles. Since you guys just hate that. Reduce the spawn rate of raiders who would reduce the arcade tile occupancy. Change the symbols to stay on the arcade tiles longer after stepping off the central control unit. Add more central control units to allow identifying arcade tile more easily in some dungeons. Overall, fix the difficulty of named monster patterns in invasion dungeons. Honestly, guys, a pretty much general overhaul, so everyone should be able to get Haley a bit more and get those gold times better. And then reduce the frequency of skill use during immunity. The Ledris, 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 reduce the quantity and frequency of guided projectiles during immunity. Sigvor reduced the skill use frequency of the high angle projectiles, reduced duration of AOE remaining from explosives during immunity. Warroth reduced the skill use frequency of guided projectile skills, removed the shield barrier summoning skill during immunity. Grammoth reduced the skill use frequency of thermite grenade during immunity. Rig and Rig Nid of Rig Nid. <laughs> Remove the use of guided projectile skills and reduce the frequency of barrier wall usage during immunity. Egonia reduced the ice prison skill use frequency during immunity. Overall, all of these are getting just reduced. Reduce the beam skill use frequency during immunity from dreadful abomination. Um, Migor removes the use of beam skill and reduce the 
Mycelium skill use frequency during immunity. Reduce the teleportation skill use frequency in combat. Tistruin removes the use of guided projectile skill. Reduce the induction power. Also reduce the beam skill use frequency during immunity. Overall, across the board, just making all of these completely easier. Remove the um, Grunka, remove the beam skill and change the AoE skill to be the main skill during immunity. Karin, reduce the shield fire skill use frequency during immunity. Net, reduce the monster summon skill use frequency during immunity. Then they're increasing the Haley research material rewards available at each clear time in the invasion dungeons. From 3 to 1 to 5 4 3. Huge. And then improve the inversion reinforcement skill effect. We're also going to pause here. I will leave a link to the articles. These are huge. Hold on. Right off here, you see that? The so before 1.1.0. 1 .1 say you went with biodensity augmentation, you were getting that max HP by percentage, but you were losing defense. Now, after 1.1.1, dot one you're just getting the max hp you're not losing defense and this is going for various things though a little more buff to the amount you're getting and you're not getting those negative effects on that defense say the bio density and the shield particle so that's huge making these more useful not as useless right um let's take a look neural focus augmentation you're still losing that skill effect range but you're getting plus one more on the max MP. Really here, I'll leave this up to you guys to pause, kind of skim through these a little bit. I got the inversion particle one here. You're getting more defense and you're not losing that max HP. So overall across the board, some very good changes here. And these are huge regarding, you know, these augmentations we can use. Very nice indeed. But I'm going to say it, guys. I'm going to say it now. <laughs> as fast as they are moving on these changes, you can tell they kind of thought these through. Like, uh, maybe these won't. Oh, okay, before 1.1.0, maybe these will be well received. Let's have these after 1.1.1 ready for backup just in case. Alrighty, let's implement them in. Make them seem like we're working hard. We're hard at work. But they had all this stuff planned out. <laughs> Uh, and literally everything they've changed. Damn near everything. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, the cooldown. They've changed the cooldowns on this one here. The inverted defibrillation. This is a huge one because when you died, you've essentially got a, a free respawn. You didn't die. You got your health back. And that's went from 25 seconds to 15. So now you can proc that even more often. As long as conditions are met. Huge changes across the board. I don't want to waste too much time on these. I'll leave you guys, you know, to pause here and kind of read over these. Oh my god, this is a huge one. Hyperdimensional vision. That cooldown was 300 seconds. Now it's a 60 second cooldown. And it's been buffed. So when landing a firearm crit hit, has a 27% chance to get the hyperdimensional vision. Which removes debuff for 3 seconds and grants debuff immunity for the duration. Every 60 seconds you have a 27% chance to proc it for 3 seconds. That is huge. More over here. And doing a little glance here. See some of the major ones to kind of cover. Oh, this one here. Unconsciousness. When all skills are on cooldown, it grants the unconsciousness. Cooldown on the next skill you use minus 8%. Prior to this, it was 210 seconds. Now there is no cooldown of it. So when all skills are on cooldown, you'll get it and still minus 8%. But now there is no cooldown to it. Wow, suits. Alright, what else you got for us? Um shield increase of overwhelming shield have been increased to 26.8% of max HP. HP increase of overwhelming HP has been increased to 19.8% of max shield. Decreased defense and HP of Pyromaniac Standard Hard and Intercept Battle. Also decreased HP and shield of the Hummingbirds which appear in Executioner and Pyromaniac Intercept Battles? <laughs> what? Excuse me? Decreased, decreased defense and HP of Pyro? And with Haley, we're already damn near one-shotting him prior to this? 
Now, a skill score for defeating monsters in certain hard infiltration operations has been increased. You should be able to hit those at 29k threshold in Magister Lab much easier. Kingston, Magister Lab, Sterile Land, Unknown Laboratory, Fortress, Quarantine Zone. Yep, shorten the time required to interact with objects. Other miscellaneous bug fixes. Which have been adjusted to start only after entering the large scale outpost barricade. Fix an issue where incorrect text prompts were displayed when there's a nearby makeshift camp located in a different battlefield. Fix an issue in the voltage charge effect of Excava where the amount of max stacks incorrectly displayed. The next stage, the enhanced unique ability screen. Other things across the board, some module changes. Coming a turn with Jaber's turret zone. To affect range equipped if the turret zone would not expand as much as it should. Jaber still cannot catch a break. <laughs> but they got on this one quick. And it fixed an issue where if Jaber has a turn engineering module equipped, the turn engineering skill could duplicate turret zones. And some director additional comments. Based on community feedback and data, the dev team analyzed the success rate of the invasion dungeons and adjusted difficulty of puzzles and battles against named bosses. Essentially a wrap-up summary to everything and their changes. Although not yet included in the 1.1.1 update, we're also working on adding matchmaking to the invasion dungeons. We're committed to improving this feature so that you can enjoy invasion dungeons with your party as soon as possible. Increase the amount of rewards, Haley's research materials, and invasion dungeons, and all that jazz. I'll leave you guys to catch up on this stuff. Pretty much just a wrap up of everything. And here, finally, in the second update scheduled for October 10th plan on introducing infiltration operations of the highest difficulty. We will continue to incorporate your feedback to ensure an even more engaging and fun battle experience. Awesome. Even harder infiltration operations. Get those builds ready, guys. Let's go. So that is the 1.1.1 patch note hotfix summary. Thank you guys for watching. And remember... To slay and conquer.